Hello guys. Welcome on in to Bar Talk. Um, so if you've noticed, one, I'm not at Shinnick's right now. And two, um, I'm two minutes late. I'm very particular with time. And unfortunately, the reason why we're late has to do with my background right now. Um, I literally at eight o'clock, it hit eight o'clock on the dot and, uh, and Biggie fell. Biggie... Biggie fell, so I don't, there's not enough time to rehang him up, unfortunately. I'm very sad, but uh, Biggie is still in the building. He is just not um, on the building, if that makes any sense. So Biggie will be up tomorrow because it was all a dream and, and ooh, does that look like me? I don't know, okay, all right, we're gonna put him down. <laughs> okay guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> it literally just happened like exactly at eight o'clock. Um, craziness, but it's all good. Everything's fine. Guys, welcome on in to another edition of Bar Talk. I know you guys have a lot of places to choose from in terms of content, and I'm very grateful that you choose to, you know, come here each night. If it is each night or if it's every other night, whatever it is, I'm just grateful that you guys are coming here and hanging out with me. So thank you guys again. Um, the, I want to explain a little bit of how Bar Talk came about because I think we might have some new people. Um, so basically, I'm a bartender and I am a sports reporter. And about a month ago, I found out that the state of Illinois shut down all bars and restaurants. And then on March 17th, I found out that I was on furlough. So I was really heartbroken. I was devastated. And I said to myself, um, I got to do something. I need to find a reason to wake up every day. And I thought, why can't I virtually be your bartender and have amazing conversations? So that's kind of how Bar Talk came about. It was originally going to be a podcast, but I almost like this way better. And I think it's kind of worked out. Um, so let me go ahead and tell you guys what I'm drinking. I'm drinking a claw. Super basic. It's amazing. I'm not mad about it. Tell me what you guys are drinking. And as you guys are typing it all in and punching it away, let me go ahead and tell you about our next guest. Um, can you do an episode teaching me how to do my hair? I could definitely do an episode teaching you guys how to do your hair if you want. I'll put a poll up afterwards and you guys tell me. Um, okay, so our guest has joined us. Let me go ahead and let you guys in on who is joining me this evening. I'm so excited. So we have Alana Walker. Alana is a uh, volleyball player at Northwestern University, and um, she's entering into her senior season. So her last dance is coming up and she is an absolute stud on and off the court and i'm really excited to have her in so let me go ahead and get her on give me one ooh, bell's over on sounds delicious right now okay sorry guys we're just uh with you but as you're doing this cheers hi daniel i miss you i miss the musicals this morning Hello! Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I am loving your hair right now. Oh, it's like really messy, but like it's gonna have to do it for a long time. It's, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I feel like I'm two-toned right now because that's why I'm wearing a hat. My top hat is like literally all brown and then it's just like blonde. So I'm like, we're just gonna let it go and flow like this. <laughs> no, I don't blame you. Yeah, so I so I really appreciate you coming on in. Um, I know you can't technically drink because of NCAA rules, but that is totally okay. Um, the beauty of bar talk is you don't really have to be drinking to be here. Um, <laughs> but what are you? What beverage are you having with us this evening? Okay, so I have my water bottle of water. Beautiful. And then I have Gatorade in a cup. I love it. So, so love it, love it, love it. The powder is it the powdered Gatorade or like the bottled Gatorade? Um, it's the bottle. They sent us like the powdered, but like it doesn't hit the same. Got it you. Just doesn't, yeah. Got you. Got you. All right. Well, let's go ahead. You cheers your Gatorade. I will cheers my claws. And everyone who is watching, cheers on with us. Um. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive on in. You have a very athletic DNA. Let's say. Um. Your dad being Antoine Walker. What did he teach you? Um. About being a competitor. Um, uh, I would just say the idea of like never giving up is kind of what I took from my dad. Um, I was like really young though, like in his like prime, mm -hmm. but like growing up, I started to value like watching film of him and just like watching different clips. 
Um, and just literally the idea that like, no matter how many people tell you, like you aren't going to do something or you're not going to reach your goals, that's completely tangible. And he showed me that like when he won a championship and yeah. That's amazing. Um, was there, did he ever talk about, cause again, like I, I can't imagine how difficult, how, how great and how difficult it must've been like having the name and being associated with him because one, it's great. And you, you're, you're proud of your dad, obviously all of he's accomplished, but then maybe at the same time, there could be this thing of like, you know, Oh, you know, she gets all of her athletic abilities from her dad or like, you know, <laughs> did you feel like you had to almost prove yourself even more because of it? Maybe. Yeah. That's actually why I did not play basketball. Um, and like, as I get older, I kind of wish that I would have at least tried it. Cause I don't know like where I could have gone with it, but um, I literally said I did not want to basketball because I didn't want the comparison. I, I actually never told people who my dad was because I always grew up with my mom. Um, so like to know me, you had to know me to know who my dad was. So then even now people are like finding out as, you know, like my platform grows, people are like, oh, like your dad's Antoine Walker because I wanted no association with it because everything that I've accomplished, I wanted for me, not because of him. So... I love that. And I think because of that, maybe you had a chip on your shoulder that was a little different than, than maybe other people's chips, would you say? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Okay. So you are entering in to your senior year of college. Um, and But before we get into like that, you know, kind of excitement that comes with senior year, what has been your favorite athletic memory within the last three years with your time at Northwestern? <sighs> oh, God. Um I would say it has to be like my our last win against Illinois because um, when I came to Northwestern obviously we did not have an arena we were playing in a high school so until like the end or middle of my sophomore year I didn't even know what it felt like to play in a home like college arena that's crazy uh, yeah we played at ETHS which I visited in high school like it was just like not what I thought it would be at first yeah um and I obviously came into a program that was rebuilding and my class was the first class that the new coach um had recruited so it was like our class was there to make a statement and I feel like the last game we played last season against Illinois when we beat them in four was that statement because two teams there's always this conflict that like Northwestern's not Chicago's Big Ten team and I was like oh it's Illinois because like you guys always lose to them we actually usually play terrible at Illinois like terrible and even like anytime we played them home or away actually but this time it was like I, I actually cried at the end because I'm dramatic oh, but it's okay <laughs> but it was like I finally saw like things shifting like I, yeah. I I finally was like okay like we can do this like we can you know go to the tournament we can go far in the tournament and so I think that was like the turning point for me and like my most memorable moment so far. Oh my God. I love that. Okay. I have to ask because I was looking through some of your stats. You had a game where you hit 900. Yeah. Okay. So let me, so for some, for the people who are watching who maybe don't understand like how the volleyball terminology of that works, let me just kind of like break it down for you. A volleyball hitting average is similar to a baseball hitting average. So as a volleyball player, if you're hitting like, 400 like that's really good 300 is still good you hit 900 in a game like what the <laughs> hell like tell me about that game please um I actually remember that game it's funny because I have the mindset every time I take a swing that I want to get a kill that you should like, yeah right and so when I don't I get mad I get frustrated and like I have a competition with whoever my blocker is. So it's like that game when I hit 900, I actually had no idea. I was just, I just noticed that I was like, okay, like I keep getting kills, but I had no idea that I hit 900 at all. And I was just like, just swinging away. Um, and then after the game, our coach was like, yeah. And like a lot of like, you know, set a new record at Northwestern. I almost broke the record. I missed it by like one kill. No! I, I know. I missed it by like one kill. But um, he was like, she almost broke the record and she hit 900. And I think that was because I was playing most like carefree. Just like I had no idea. Cause like, I'm not gonna lie. Like a secret is I kind of keep stats in my head. 
like I play a game like in my head because in Northwestern we don't have the scoreboard that tells you how many blocks, how many digs, how many uh, kills. Right. So I'm always like taking like a mental note. And I always have the goal of like four kills per set will get me where I want to be at the end of the game. Um, but that game, I literally didn't keep stats of anything. I just was just playing. And that was like a huge moment for me that I was like, oh, shit. That is so amazing. And I feel like I can relate to that. So like I played many years ago and I think the times when I did the best were when I just, for lack of a better word, didn't give a fuck. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. cause you're, you're just so like, you, you just want to win where it, it, you know, it almost doesn't matter the other stuff around it that you're just so focused on winning and getting your job done and then you find it afterwards you're like wait I did what or like you you know what I mean like it's so crazy though I love it okay so entering senior year now what do you feel that you still have to prove um for sure I want to be an all-american like you deserve it dear 100% yeah. I want to be an all-american um I said that coming into Northwestern and I haven't been one yet but I want to be an All-American, and I also want to make the tournament. Like, I have not been to an NCAA tournament, and I'm like, okay, it has to happen. Like, we got – we get four tries, so I'm approaching my last try. Um, but, yeah, those are, like, my two things. I think that – I just want to be remembered at Northwestern. Like, me being from Chicago and my dad having, like, a huge impact. You could ask any Chicago athlete. They know who my dad is. Any coach, any, like, anyone – that's in Chicago knows who he is and for what he did. And so I want that same type of legacy. I want to leave Northwestern and be like, oh no, like Alana Walker was this, this, this. And like, I just want to be remembered. So I feel like that's like my goal, my last season. I love that. I think that is amazing. How do you guys feel? I mean, obviously everything's kind of on like a weird pause right now, but like with the, with the momentum you guys had said you had at the end of last season, entering into this year and you're like incoming freshman class how do you think it will look like when you guys get to play yeah I think this last season is going to be the best the team has ever been just because of pure talent and development that we've had mm -hmm. um but also we have a bond that's probably stronger I can honestly say than any volleyball team in the country like oh I love that yeah like we do so many things on our own and we're such a close-knit team all levels that it's like it's like we know we physically can do it but I feel like what's hindered us is the mental aspect so now I feel like now that our bond is so tight and we're getting so much better that it's like we finally have all the pieces and like incoming freshmen like now they can be here over the summer and do things like that because when I was coming in you couldn't, we never, like, were here over the summer. So it's, right. like, we get those, like, months to, like, keep developing. Um, and I think it's just going to be, like, really good. Like, I have so much confidence. And, like, even though we're in quarantine, I feel like it's almost a benefit for, like, athletes. Like, I literally can wake up, do my work, and go train. Like, I have extra time to speed train, jump training, like, lifting. Like, it's – it's like it can be an advantage if you want it to be. I love that you said that because I feel like right now, as much as people are seeing the negative side of this because it's so highlighted, the at least for me, like the figuring out who you are mentally and taking care of yourself here. Because once you're good here, you can do you can do the working and you can put in the work. So. Right. I mean, maybe it, and that's a question we're going to ask later. So I'm, I'm going to put that on pause because I do, I do have that question. I do want to wait till later. Um, okay. So then you'll have your final year and I know you also do some modeling. Do you want to take that and make that into like the next chapter of your life as well? Right. So yeah, I was signed with four before I came to Northwestern and in high school, I made the choice of choosing sports over, you know, modeling mm -hmm. and it was like the best decision I've ever made because now I'm able to still model after college. Um, but it's definitely like modeling has been like my first dream. Like Aww. my dream is like be in Vogue, runway, fashion week, like all those types of things. I used to want to be a Victoria's Secret model, but like now like 
I'm a little too swole to be a sneaker model, but like it may be Nike, but like that kind of concept, like modeling was has always been like my first love. And so that's like kind of what I'm battling is do I want to pursue a pro career and go overseas or do I want to try and model at 20, like 22. Right. Um, but I think like, I think I have to follow my dream. Like I think if I didn't, then I would have always be like, I'm missing out on something or like what could have been. Right. Um, especially like with just how social media can help you with that now. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot easier. Very true. And first off, there's nothing wrong with being swole and you can just change the <laughs> modeling game and make everyone swole. So I, I am going to drink to that and everyone raise your glasses because we are now going to go into some fun rapid fire questions. Okay. Okay. So it has to be the first thing that comes to your mind. Try not to hesitate, but if you have to, I understand. Okay. okay. All right. What is something people would be surprised to know about you? Uh, <laughs> Take your time if you need to take your time. It's fine. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, surprise to know about me. I used to sing and like dance and like act and be in like that portion and not play sports. It wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. I realized okay. that. I can't sing. Okay. The only dancing I can do is TikTok and like my acting is terrible. But oh. that that was like what I thought I was gonna do. Okay. Um, okay, this is a question for everyone watching. I want you to answer as well. Chance or Kanye? Chance. I, I said Chance too. So everyone who's watching, I yeah. would love to know. I, me and my sister had this debate. I'm like, I love old school Kanye. He's still a genius. But like right now, I, I love Chance. I think Kanye is like the greatest to ever come out of Chicago musically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that Chance has done so much for the city of Chicago and the youth of Chicago that, yeah. like, you can never forget where you came from. And I feel like Kanye forgets where he came from. And so the fact that Chance is still doing things and he's trying to be active and, like, donating money and, like, having, you know, those, like, shows where people can showcase their talent and he'll be there. Things like that are unmatched. Like, you can't. It's, I totally agree. 100% agree. Um, what's a trend you would like to see disappear forever? A trend I'd like to see. Oh, um, I don't know if you know, like, about TikTok. I do know about TikTok. But there's a trend where people are having their parents or, like, other, other people rate, like, famous TikTokers or, like, famous people. And... I want it to die because I feel like it is so like negative and just like nasty and people forget that people with high platforms still have feelings. Yeah. And so like, it'll be like, like parents like, Oh no, he's ugly. Like who wants to hear that? Like, yeah. just, you know what I mean, so I feel like that's like a trend. Like I would just want to see like never again. I agree to that. 100%. Um, what is the kindest thing a stranger has done for you? Probably just paid for something. Like, I got my car washed the other day, and, like, someone, like, paid for it. Um, yeah, or just, like, something like that, which is, like, little random acts of kindness that, like, catch me off guard. I'm like, hmm, okay. And That's then you nice. just feel, and it, like, puts you in an, an instantly a better mood, right? Yeah, I'm like, okay, there's still people, nice people out here that, like, just want to do nice things for someone else. And, like, I just felt like it was really sweet. Oh, I love that. Okay, fill in the blank. Never have I ever what? Never have I ever. Oh, God. Jesus. What haven't I done? <laughs> Um, never have I ever, I would say, played anyone one-on-one -on -one in basketball. Okay. I feel right. like that's rare with my height. Very, yes. Um, what is the biggest turnoff in a guy? Oh, God. When they, like, <laughs> well, when they try too hard and, like, like, let's say I don't respond. Mm -hmm. I wake up to like 12 texts it's okay to double text but yeah. you know it's like you know what I mean like if I yeah. want if I wanted to communicate with you I'd probably communicate with you 
Yeah. So when they try too hard, um, it's probably my main thing. Or biggest turnoff when I'm speaking and they don't say anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you could be, like, talking to them, and then they'll just, like, be scrolling on their phone. I'm like, well, damn, I'm talking to myself. Like, Oh, that's so things. annoying. I swear almost every guy I've ever talked to has done that to me, like, multiple times. And it will make me just block your number. That's when you're like, bye. No, literally. <laughs> like, just throw them out the door. <laughs> literally, I'm like, yeah, no, you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. Okay, do you prefer playing middle, or do you prefer the pin? That's funny because I played right side forever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. High school, I played all around right side. Club, I played right side. Got to college. They were like, we need a middle. And I'm like, and I actually, I hated it. Like, I hated it for like, like half of my freshman year. Almost more than half. I despise it. But now I love it. Okay. Just because like you're the most active and you're involved in every single play always. And I can always do what I'm good at, which is blocking. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it flipped like my end of my freshman year. I used to only like right side. And now I'm like, okay, I can, I like the middle, but it's like, once I got good at it too. I right. Like it. And cause middle's middle is, I think one of the most underrated and under respected positions. On the 100%. Court. I, um, I, I mean, one, I'm 5'7 and can't jump, so, like, that was never in the cards for me. But, I mean, you think about it, like, you set the tone for the defense, for everything. You're mm -hmm. constantly moving around back and forth. But, like, when like when you get that kill and, the, and, and it, or that block and it goes straight down, like, oh, God, like, I'm feeling it. And it, I didn't even do anything. Like, Oh, yeah, it's different. And I've also noticed, like, girls would be like oh I play middle too and like I hate it because like I'm I'm so tall and like I never get set and like things like that I'm like but if you're a good middle that like can transition every single play like they're gonna set you exactly yeah you just have to demand the ball and so I think that's also why I worked well in the middle because I'm very vocal Ooh, so right. like I was like I'm up every single time like feed me the ball and so that helped a lot with my development in the middle Love it. Okay, what is the best piece of advice someone has given you? The best, I would say, would be my mom. And mm -hmm. she's always told me to not care what people say because people are always going to have something to say regardless. And I feel like I didn't feel that until I got, you know, a little bit of a platform mm -hmm. because it's like people will, like, add their two cents when no one asks. Like, I don't, like, people are like, oh, I think you should, you should wear that. Or I think, like, you shouldn't, like, wear your hair this, like, this way. I'm like, did I ask? And <laughs> yeah. I, and I feel like I've seen, like, people, like, even my friends get really, like, hurt and affected by, like, what people say on the internet and taking it to heart. And I feel like I've just been raised to the point where, like, I don't even care what anyone else has to say about me. Like, at all. And I feel like that's, that's helped me the most in my yeah. development. I think the other one moms always have the best things to say. Like they always. just give, they give the best piece of advice and to kind of echo off of what your mom said, it speaks more to what the person is saying about you than it does to you. Right. Like it just, it just totally does. Um, what is something you wish you were good at? I wish I could sing. I say this every time because I feel like singing is like, if someone's like, oh, I can sing, like, oh, let me hear you. You can show it off right then yeah. and there. Oh, I can play a sport. Well, shit, I don't have a net. I don't have a ball. I don't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah. you don't know if I'm good or not. And I feel like I want to sing because one of my best friends, she has an amazing voice. She can mm -hmm. sing so well. And I'm so jealous. I'm like, yeah. I wish I could sing. Like, I wish I could do something like that. I know, I know. I always think I sound like Christina Aguilera and uh, Demi Lovato, but I just, I, I just really don't. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. Okay, um, this is a question that I want to ask everyone too. So go ahead and chime on in. Would you rather be the superhero in the movie or the villain? That's a good question. Like most people would say, like superhero. But the villain's almost cooler. 
Yeah. Like, you know, like they yeah. act like they're like almost smarter too. Cause like I've been doing all this stuff. You still can't catch me doing what I want. I would say villain. I I think I would love to play. I think playing a villain in a movie would be so much fun. It would be so even, much cooler. Yeah, even though, like, the superhero gets, like, the glory and the spotlight and they save the day. Like, I just think being a villain, you just, like, don't give a shit. You're just, like, whatever. Don't at all. Yeah, it's great. It's so great. Okay, what um, what are you binge watching right now? Um, so I finished All American a while ago. And that was okay. the last thing I binge watched and I actually, like, really enjoyed. I finished it in, like, a day. Dang. <laughs> That's fast. It, it was, like, the first week of quarantine. Okay. I finished it, the season two, in, like, a day, because I always watch season one. But gotcha, I started gotcha. Ozark. Mm. But I wouldn't say I'm binge watching it because I'm not, like, hooked on it. Got you. So I don't really know. I've heard, I need to give it another try, but I, I've heard the, in the beginning, it's, it's like that, it, it's a slow start. Right, right. Like, it, like, lay out your characters and everything, and then once you figure it out, you can kind of go and run with it. Yeah, so it's like, I'm watching it, and also, like, you have to just be so tuned into it, like, you have to mm -hmm. actually listen and, like, watch, and, like, I get distracted easily, so, like, yeah. I'm always rewinding, but that's what I'm trying to, like, get into. I'm on season two now. So that's a that's a movie you watch with sub or a TV show you watch with subtitles. Oh, for sure. I turned them on. I had. Yes. To. OK. Um, what is the song that makes you run to the dance floor? Run to the dance floor. Any. OK. Weird. But anything by Chief Keef, I'm immediately phone out like, <laughs> on, like ready to go. Because being in Chicago and hearing mm -hmm. Chief Keef, any song it's immediately just going to be, like, lit, like, all the time. And I know all the words to every song. Oh or, God. or Meg the Stallion, when I say, like, cash shit or anything like that, because I love Meg because she's so tall, and she's, like, one of the only tall female rappers ever. So, like, oh. I love her. So right. anything by her and anything by Chief Keef, I'd say I'm instantly, like, phone out, ready Let's to go. go. Awesome. Okay, what always makes you laugh? Always makes me laugh. Oh, God. Oh, Twitter. Easily. I'm yeah. on Twitter, and I know I'm going to have a good time, because people have no, it's not like Instagram, people have no filter on Twitter. People say whatever yeah. they want. And it's the yeah. perfect combination of, like, Instagram memes, plus, like, funny TikToks that can just, like, go on Twitter. So easily that. I I feel like that Michael Jackson meme where he's, like, eating the popcorn, like, watching <laughs> everyone. <laughs> yes. And also with like, they're not funny, they're not, but like the coronavirus ones with the Chicago mayor, Lightfoot. Okay, have you, have you follow the account Where's Lori Lightfoot on Instagram? Yes. It's yes. amazing. It's the best account. It's my Those favorite account. Oh that my God, is funny. I, she's going to come out of this more famous than any person on the planet. She got on Twitter and she said, who made this? And I died. Like, okay. she's funny. The <laughs> one where she had said, she put on Twitter where they talked about closing the basketball. And she was like, your jump, your jump shot is still in anything. <laughs> it's so broke. I was like, I can't with her. No, she's so funny. And when people photoshopped her in front of all the places that were closed in the same state, I was like, yeah, she's going to, like, go crazy. But those are hilarious. They are hysterical. For anyone who's watching, if you have not, <laughs> if you don't follow that account, you need to follow where is Lori at. I believe it's what it's called because – you'll laugh for days you'll laugh for days so it's speaking okay. of going places where has been your favorite place that you visited so far i would say la is like one of my favorite places ever mm -hmm. but i would say my favorite place i've been so far is just like when i go to miami because uh, every time i go it's memorable like it's always something happening it's always like every single night doesn't matter what day of the week it's super fun it could be on the water. So I say, like, there, because I have, like, the best vibes. So that's, like, okay. the best place I go consistently, I would say. Got you. Love that. Okay, who should my next guest be? 
Oh God. Your next guest. Oh. Uh, I'm trying to think. I feel like I want it to be a girl because love it. Yeah. Obviously. But I'm trying to think who. Okay, I know, um, I feel like it would be cool to interview Lexi Brown. She's a, um, she plays in the WNBA. Okay. And she also plays overseas, which is like a cool contrast that I always wonder about. Um, mm. But she went to Duke. Okay. So I feel like that's super fun and like a cool yeah. experience. Um, but she's also like an influencer. So I feel like she has all these different aspects that would be super cool to look at and that people would be interested in. Okay. Do you know her? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Then you might have to help me make that happen. Okay? I will. I will. Okay. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Last two questions. What have you learned about yourself during this time in quarantine? I learned about myself. I have learned that I can do more than play volleyball. If that makes sense. You're like, I've learned, like, I started sitting down and reading books. Like, I've started trying to provide more content on social media if that's what I want to do when I'm mm -hmm. doing volleyball. Just, like, being able to, like, step away and not, like, have to worry about, like, going to practice, like, every single day and, like, having hours of my day just to do whatever I want. I've just learned that there's so many more aspects to me than I even noticed. And which I think is cool because I've never had this much time to do what I want ever in my life. Like literally. I love, ever. That. I love yeah. that. That's amazing. Okay. Once all of this is said and done, we can go back to living life the way we want to. What's going to be the first thing you do? Probably pick up a volleyball because that's going to be rough. Yeah. But <laughs> probably go play volleyball. Um, but first thing I do, I'm going to hug my grandma because Aww. Easter, I could barely be with her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my grandma's like one of my best friends. So I'm going to hang out with her. Um, and just also just see my friends. Like, it's just weird. They're all home, but like, I can't hang out with them. Yeah. So it's like, you might as well be at school still. Like, yeah. But, yeah, definitely, like, see my people that I'm closest to. I love that. Okay, so we are going to... end this on a toast so everyone's watching please raise your glasses and I thought this was really just kind of funny and I thought maybe it might go with this conversation I think it does and it says may we never go to hell but always be on our way there <laughs> that is <laughs> so, funny so cheers yes. to that <laughs> All right, Alana, thank you so much. I hope you had as much fun as I Thanks did. Thanks for having me. This was so fun and cool. Yes, and I cannot wait to, to one, Northwestern is definitely like Chicago's volleyball team. Let's not forget that. Um, and I can't wait to come see you play because it's always, I love please being able do. to go to the game. Please games. do. Yes, I will. I can't wait. So thank you again. We will talk soon, and you have a good night, okay? Thank you. You too. All right, bye-bye. All right, guys, that was Alana Walker. So much fun. So great. Okay, so if you guys are just joining in and you're wondering why Biggie isn't here, it's because he fell. So literally right at 8 o'clock, he just fell down. Like, fell down. Like, he just, just collapsed. So shit's fallen. We'll fix it later. Whatever. Um, guys, thank you so much for tuning on in. Again, I know you guys have a lot of places to go each night, so... Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. Next guest is TBD. I'm just waiting to confirm. So uh, when I know, you know. But everyone have a lovely thirsty Thursday. I'm going to finish drinking this white claw and probably going to have another one. And everyone stay safe, wash your hands, stay home, and I will see you tomorrow. All right, bye-bye, guys.